talking about it or are they holding it back and then leading to all sorts of challenges later on in life? Well, I would say my experience is they do talk about it. Probably we in, 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 we need a, a contest of you know boys boys and men men and sure. things like that. So it's talked about. Uh, if sometimes even people want to outperform what they naturally could even do, mm. uh, just that the discussions are such that because they are not a specialist, then one particular medication is suggested or the other. One particular herbal medication is suggested or the other. So they do talk about it. Just that then you end up taking some other medications, which then mm. may give you some side effects and some complications uh, further. Of course, some also think they are doing very well, but their partners would tell them that, no, you are not performing. You're not performing. And, performing. and they also, you know, are driven to come and see us, you know, for help. Because so he feels his ego has been bruised. Exactly, yeah. Okay. And I think that they are also concerned about it because, for instance, some of the management of some of our cases, whether a cancer of the red tube, a cancer of the colon, a cancer of the prostate or bladder, which sometimes in the course of the management, mm. the directions are affected. Some men will say, no, I don't want to go through that treatment because it's going to affect my direction. So I think it's a concern for men and they are willing to keep it uh, uh, as right. much as they can. Okay, another question that's coming, it says, Hi, Home Affairs. I've fallen down many times and hurt my waist and this has affected me seriously. I am told that I have nerve issues. Doc, what should I do? And that's from Cranting. Yeah, as we explained, I mean, I mean, the nerves are important to power everything. So if you have been falling down and the waist is a challenge, you may have difficulty walking, you may have tingling and pains in the legs, controlling constipation, the bowel movement will be a problem, passing urine could be a problem because they are all controlled and the rest will be a problem. Mm. So generally lower down there, everything is not being fired as they would and they are not coordinated as they would. I would say that the neurosurgeons and the orthopedic surgeons are the best people to consult at this point in time. Okay. Because even if you have got erectile problems or you've got urinary issues or I mean, I mean moving your bowel issues on issues, the fundamental problem, the root cause is the back. And sometimes because something is present on the nerves, mm. once they do a surgery or do a maneuver or they do an injection that takes off the pressure of the nerves, with time the nerves will recover. And then the, all the other secondary issues that you are concerned about will be solved, including even the erectile function that may be as a consequence of these spinal issues. So I said I talk to an orthopedic surgeon, better still talk to a new surgeon. And once you okay. go to the root cause of the problem, all the other issues that you are concerned about, including your gait, standing, nerve, all of them will likely to return. Of course, it takes a bit of time, but they are likely to return. Right. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, if you're tuned into, into Joy 99.7, you can send us your messages on our WhatsApp number, 055 I've got a message in here from Ajiman Joseph in Tema, Community 9, and he says, uh, Doc, is regular, what does he say? Please ask, let's, what do you say? Take regular intake of water. Yeah, reg uh, okay, irregular intake of water. Yes, in other words, if okay. it, it doesn't, doesn't take if, as much. irregular take of water, can it lead lead to prostate problems? Um, it's difficult to define what you mean by irregular intake of water. Probably what we have experienced is that, you know, the age group that prostate enlargement becomes an issue, making passing urine difficult, straining, mm. having a poor stream. At that age as well, the bladder itself is also getting older, and so the bladder function is also less less nerve to power the bladder, you know, the bladder, less muscle strength to be able to push the urine. Compounded by the prostatic obstruction, the bladder that goes changes. So here you are, the difficulty with urination or the problems with urination, either difficulty of passing too frequently, has to do with the prostate, and the urinary bladder that has been compromised in one way or the other. So when you put too much water in, then the bladder and the prostate all become angry. And so the urine wouldn't come at all. Okay. It's not only water, even even you know, drink, alcoholic drinks, it will stimulate a lot of food production and then they get angry. Mm. So we say that after the age of 40, or definitely if you have got prostatic problem, sure. then too much water is, is a problem. Probably 1.5 liters, 2 liters of water a day can be helpful. But if you decide to do water therapy and end up taking 4 liters and 6 and 8 liters of, of water, then it amplifies all the complaints that you have. And so wow. it can even tip you to getting a retention of urine 
requiring a catheter. Fantastic. So some people will have minimal problems, but they go for a party, they go for an anniversary or a funeral, and they come out with retention from the funeral grounds to the clinic for you to pass a catheter because too much fluid and the bladder and the prostate, which are all aging and, and a, a challenge, then give up. So okay. I would say that less water is preferable, 1.5 to 2 liters a day, probably that way to go. Okay. We are also coming to you live on Joy Prime TV on DSTV channel 281 and we are discussing men's health on home affairs. My guest is is Prof um, Matthew Che Yamua. Uh, he's a consultant ure urologist and uh, we are discussing the whole issue of men's health. We've, we've touched on the issue of testosterone, we've touched on prostate a little bit, uh, erectile dysfunction as well and please send, keep sending in your messages and we'll do our best to answer all your questions. The number is 055-1111-997. Prof, I have a message in here from, let's see, who is this? From Yao, and he says, I've been married for four years. I'm 38. Anytime I have sex with my wife, it only lasts for the first round. After that, I don't get an erection again until the following day. My wife has tried helping me on some occasions by massaging my penis, but still, it's not working. What do I do? Okay. So from, from, from comments, it looks like he's able to get one good erection. That tells us that the system is working, working well. The nerves, the blood vessels, the penis, the hormones, they're all working well. Your ability to go for a second, a third, or a fourth one is a matter of recovery of the system. And the recovery of the system depends on the efficiency of the heart and the nerves. And it has everything to do with exercise. Everything for the tension to, re, to, to re come back. And of course, the hormone level as well. So if there's a difficulty coming back, then I will say that, look at your life. Are you sedentary? Are you always in a vehicle moving around? Are you not? If you're not exercising, then that is a challenge. Because the system is good. Just that the recovery is slow. And so the heart must work better. The muscles must work better. If you're on some anti hypertensive medications, we may consider changing it. So let's look at your heart. How well is your heart doing? Are you hypertensive? Are you diabetic? Let's deal with those things. But importantly, is an exercise. Importantly, is the testosterone level. And as I said, at your age, and we may not need to pay the testosterone, but let's make what we have efficient. Mm -hmm. And I'll say that exercise. Wake up and you realize that uh, pretty soon you can go the route that you want. The more sedentary you are, the problem. If you are taking alcohol and smoking, we also watch that because they all are fed the hormone, they all are fed the blood vessels, they make them stiff. They will have fed the nerves, and then the ability to come back is an issue. So there's no problem, but the point we have is that the ability to recover is a challenge, mm -hmm. and it's all make, it's making the system efficient. And to so watch your heart, watch your diet, and importantly, exercise, and you realize that uh, you may you may close the gap. But I must admit that as you get older, it's difficult to achieve uh, that. So. Uh, if you're able to make one run a day, probably a new one. In other words, you can make 13 a month. <laughs> and then it's still an achievement. That's an achievement. <laughs> okay. Okay, Doc. Um, the whole question of prostate cancer, uh, is it has been described as a silent killer if you don't actually address it early enough. Um, how do we as men manage our prostate effectively to ensure that we don't become susceptible to prostate cancer okay I, I, i'll say that we from the african background are at a disadvantage because i know you have got the caucasians and why listen to us you've got those in the asians listen to us uh, for the asians and the caucasians the chances of getting prostate cancer is a bit on the low side why is that it has to do with two important things one is genetics we inherit some genetic components on chromosome 1, which runs through us as Africans, which predispose us to developing prostate cancer. Okay. So an African in Brazil, an African in Nigeria, an African in, in Austria, has the same risk of developing prostate cancer, like any other African, and it is higher. Right. In fact, a work that was done here in Kolebule by Professor Yabua found out that the prevalence of prostate cancer in the community is about 7%. So out of every 100 men in Ghana, or in Accra, Greater Accra, seven of them was having prostate cancer in various stages. So, so we are at a disadvantage, first thing. So in other words, what I'm trying to point out is that 
screening, approaching for it to be assessed is extremely important. So after 40 years, definitely 45 years, every year you need to get closer for us to assess you by the process-specific antigen PSA and the rectal examination. If you realize that they are very, very good, we may ask you to come every two years or even every three years, depending on what you have. So screening is extremely important. You ask again, why is it that we Africans are at a disadvantage? The next thing is that we have high levels of testosterone compared with the Asians and the, you know, the other groups. So we realize that we do the 100 meters, we do all the things that have got energy because sure. we have got it. In the same way, the little prostate cancer that is, you know, appears on the, on the, on the scene, we, we, we keep it to multiply quickly and then it, it causes the problem. Mm. So these are the two things. We inherit it and we have got a high testosterone level and this is the reason. So we are at an advantage, disadvantage. How do we prevent it? We talk about exercise as a risk factor. If you don't exercise, if you are obese, it's a risk factor. Smoking. So if you're an African, you are best staying away from smoking. Because if you're an African and you smoke, then you need to keep checking your prostate more frequently because it puts you at risk. If there's a family history of prostate cancer, then you ought to watch it because okay. it runs in the family. Here we are, as an African, you have got one gene running in you. And then as a family, it means another second gene also running. So you've got about two motorways running. But then, then you are in a, you and they can collide. It's very good. <laughs> then you have to keep your... Okay. Right. Okay, good. Then you also want to talk about fat diet, as we said. Then you must stay away from the meat and the chicken. Stay with fish, stay with the vegetables, okay. and probably you will be able to help yourself. Also talk about the red vegetables. A lot more tomato, a lot more watermelon, a lot more the red carrots. Then that can be very, very helpful. So these are the things that an African can do uh, to be able to help, you know, uh, protect the prostate to a point in time. But I must also emphasize what you rightly said. It is a silent killer. Sometimes I call him a gentleman. Mm. He comes there and I see there's nothing wrong. And, yeah. I'm, and, and, and I'm, I'm taking the opportunity to speak out to some other men there who we have found evidence of that there's got a prostate cancer. Some of them have actually had a chance to be able to go through the processes and we said they've got a prostate cancer. But they feel good. They can still sit in the board meeting. They can still drive their, you know, buses all the way to Kumasi and back mm. without feeling anything. And so they seem to have disappeared and say, don't mind these doctors. Please, please, please. If you have been diagnosed with prostate cancer, keep close to your doctors and let's keep the management going. If we do, we can get your whole life back. Even okay. when it is spread all over the place, we can still keep people going years. But if you avoid the treatment, mm. then it's a time bomb. It is a gentleman, it is a silent one. But before you can say, Jack, uh, uh, you are in big trouble. So please, if your doctor, your urologist, any doctor have diagnosed with prostate cancer, please, please, in your own interest, get closer back to your doctor okay. and let's follow the treatment doctor i'll come back i'll come back and ask you some questions about the psa test but let's let's take some some questions from from some of our listeners and one says in here uh let's see doc i am 60 and my sexual drive is now low if i have sex with my wife i am not able to last beyond the beyond a minute i don't drink and he asked the question, how often should I have sex? That's from Nana in Suyane. Okay. So let's let's start to how often should one have sex. If you want to have a child, as we explained about the I mean, ovulation and everything else, then a minimum of three times a week is what will make you achieve that. So if you are in plans of in getting your wife pregnant, then it should be at least three times a week. With at least three times a week, you don't need to do any calculations about ovulation and everything else. You are likely to hit the jackpot doing that. The desire for sex and frequency varies between a couple as they get older. Some couple is more frequent, some couple is less frequent. So, uh, we can't put a finger to it. Sure. The truth is that not having sex has no detrimental effect on you. If the system gets overloaded, overheated, as somebody would say. Mm. There's normally what we call night or wet dreams that virtually get the system out. Okay. And so, uh, there's no challenge with it at all. But definitely, it has advantages. I mean, the bonding with your partner, uh, making you psychologically strong, you know, it's a physical activity in itself. Uh, it affects the mood. So, it has its own advantages. I mean, if there are good sex within the marriage contest, and, you know, both couples seem to perform better so as much as you can yes okay he talked about the father 60 and erection is a challenge at that age hypertension may have set in diabetes may have set in 
sometimes the stresses of life you're not trying to you know finish your building before you go out of the lack of exercise <laughs> or the lack of exercise you know because now you've got a uh, two cars you jump into one and you jump to the other sure. so you watch your life remember what we were doing the younger age when we were 32 33 and try and relive those relive days. some of those and things. you realize that probably you the relationship will also reverse back reverse back okay. walk and leave, leave the cars packed and, and don't drink and and, and, and and keep exercising okay right let me read some some announcements music haven did you know that playing any musical instrument or singing act activates the brain in ways no other human activity can it's the total brain workout for the growing mind music learning is an invaluable input to the brain development it is enjoyable instills discipline and develops the mind at music haven we teach all the musical instruments piano organ violin guitar saxophone trumpet we teach both adults and children so parents why don't you enroll your children at music haven for a great musical experience we are open mondays through to fridays from 8 a.m to 5 p.m and on saturdays from 10 a.m to 3 p.m you can find music haven on mesa saba road near the malam Atta market or next door to Teledata. You can call us on 0244 356 or 055-255-8398. We look forward to having your children in Music Haven. Make your children heroes among the peers. Music Haven, your musical coach. For your eye care challenges, look no further than Amasha Partners Limited, and they have all the eye care that you need. Your eyes deserve the best care and quality designer eye glasses. Amasha Partners and Eye Care undertake the following services. Supplying of designer frames, sight testing, supply of lenses, sunglasses, contact glasses, ophthalmologist in attendance and general treatment. Locators at La, opposite trade fair, Spintex, adjacent to IGC, ICGC before Community 18 Junction, MacArthur Hill opposite Benj Lodge, North Koneshi Swan Lake opposite Greenhand Junction, Achimota, second floor, Denswa Plaza, Takrade, Aksim, Takrade, Aksim, and opposite the CB, CBG Bank, Ho, opposite Housen Junction, and Kumasi Airport Roundabout, Kolobu, opposite ECG, and Koforudua Central Hospital Road, and Tema Community 1 Meridian, Pla Meridian Plaza. Contact us on 0302. 939850 and 0302 778827. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Father's Day is just a few days away, and you're already getting ready or fretting over what to get for your father or father figure for the celebration. You're saying to yourself, Not another aftershave. Not to worry, GTP has got your back with prestigious Dumas fabrics as the perfect gift for this year's Father's Day. Just pick from six distinct designs that are an embodiment of creative thoughtfulness that would appeal to and excite the man of your desires. Choose the new Dumas collection as a Father's Day gift and I can assure you'll be glad you did. You can even order conveniently by contacting 0509-940-949. That's 0509-940-949 and get a fitting Dumas piece delivered to your doorstep. So keep Father's Day feeling flowing and order Dumas fabric from GTP today. Trust me, you'll get a big hug from him. Pentecost Hour, a religious broadcast program sponsored by the Church of Pentecost, comes your way with the chairman of the Church of Pentecost, Apostle Eric Nyamicha, on Joy 99.7 at 9.30 p.m. every Monday. Tune in every Monday at 9.30 starting from March 14th. As Apostle Nyamecha brings you life-transforming truth that nourishes the soul, ignites passion, and restores hope in the nations. The Church of Pentecost, we are possessing the nations for the Lord. Are you called to all fathers repping the real daddy code, which says, Be daddy, be present. This year, your Superstation Joy 99.7 is embarking on a campaign to celebrate fathers between the ages of 22 and 45. Oh, that leaves me out. <laughs> These fathers are attending antenatal cares, taking their children for weighing, going mother care shopping, and guiding their children through all their developmental ages. Here is how to join the campaign. Simply share photos of some of those amazing moments with your children with 
simply share photos of some of those amazing moments with your children with us via WhatsApp 055 Tell us how important and gratifying it is to be involved and be hands-on in your children's lives. And finally, and most importantly, a message stating your specific Real Daddy Code with all fathers out there. The Real Daddy Code. Be Daddy, be you. We're going to go for a short commercial interlude now, and we'll be back in just a moment. 99.7, the show is Home Affairs, and it's brought to you by Amasha Partners Limited and Eye Care, Samara Company Limited, and Music Haven. We've been discussing the whole subject of mental health, and um, Doc has been touching on a number of issues. Doc, before we went to the break, we were discussing the issue of prostate cancer. And um, what are the parameters or the safe parameters that men should aspire to in terms of the PSA tests? Um, what is low, what is high, what is right, and what is very dangerous? Okay. So, um, what is the PSA? So, the PSA is what we call a prostate specific antigen. Now, the PSA is, is an enzyme, or it's something that might say, we call it a hydrosylase. Now, what it does is that its function is to break down semen. Now, let me explain it. When sperms get into the vagina, it goes as a liquid. If it stays as liquid, then everything will pour out and will not be able to father children. So, God in his own wisdom has made it such that when the semen gets into the vagina, it becomes a clot, what you call a coagulum, so that it doesn't drop off. Okay. But if it stays a coagulum, then the sperms are going to get trapped in this coagulum and they will not be able to swim into the fallopian tube with the woman to the womb for fertilization to take place. So PSA then comes in, which is part of the solution, then digest this coagulum and allow the sperms to be released so that they can travel on their way. So you don't lose them out, but they can also release to continue the journey upstream. So it is a normal product of the prostate. And the normal range for most men, or we say for men, is zero to four. Zero nanograms per meal to four nanograms per meal. That's, that's, that's safe. a normal thing. Safe. Okay. However, we know that when there are diseases of the prostate, a little bit of these chemicals are squeezed into the bloodstream than normal. Or we say that the prostate can be too hot for this stem to be in the system. So, having a high level of PSA in the blood tissue that there's something wrong in the prostate. But it doesn't point to prostate cancer specifically. But does it, does it point to prostate enlargement? It could point to prostate enlargement. Okay. It could point to infection of the prostate. It could point to any injury to the prostate. So we say that this PSA comes to tell us that there's something wrong with the prostate. But what it is, I'm not sure. But I must be quick to add that our research has shown that if your PSA is between 4 and 10, the chances of finding the prostate cancer, which we are afraid of, is about 20%. Between 4 and 10? 4 and 10. Okay. If your PSA is between 10 and 20, it moves to about 30-33%, most 1 in 3, that you may find a prostate cancer. If your PSA is more than 20, the chances move to about 50-55%. Wow. And actually, the last thing we did last period, we found out that if your PSA is more than 100, the chances was Joy FM, 99.7% <laughs> chance of like finding a prostate cancer, which is what we are afraid of. Okay. So, yes, it's the PSA. But the higher the value, the more likely that what we are concerned, the prostate cancer, mm. is the issue. And just yesterday, I saw somebody's PSA, 3,686. Wow. And so in that case, the chance of prostate cancer is almost, uh, you know, a reality. 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 But so we do, in other words, we don't depend only on the PSA to make up our mind. Right. The next step is what we call a prostate biopsy, where we take some of the prostate and then we take it for the pathologist and other specialists to look okay. at it and analyze to confirm our suspicion whether what we think is a prostate cancer or not. Sometimes we send it, tell it back, oh no, you are not, you are wrong, it's not a prostate cancer, it is just an enlargement. Oh, don't worry, it is just an infection. Right. They will communicate same to the person. Or they tell, oh, your suspicion is right, it is a prostate cancer, and then we can then continue with what you are doing. So the PSA is important, and it's important because most laboratories can run it for us. Mm. So if you don't even need to see a doctor, you go to a the laboratory, they can run it for you. Okay. But we normally will combine that to what we call the rectal examination, where you put your hand and then the anus. Because unfortunately, we know that sometimes if there's a prostate cancer in the prostate and it is too too bad, too 
too, too much like on prostate, mm. then the PSA can be very low. Okay. So there have been instances where the PSA is unfortunately lower than four, but yet they've got a prostate cancer and sometimes they succumb to it. Okay. But so in other words, if the PSA is normal and you have no symptoms and our examination is normal, we are happy. In fact, if the PSA is normal, you have no symptoms, probably there's no need to do an examination. Okay. But if the PSA is normal and you have got urinary problems, then it's mandatory that we do the examination. Okay. That is the examination that will override the PSA level in our decisions to manage. And how often should men um, undertake this PSA test? From after 40 or 45, I would say yearly. Okay. But after review, if you think that your PSA is less than one, sometimes we may ask you to come in two years' time. That's if you have no complaint okay. and no symptoms. Okay, Doc, let's take some questions from mm -hmm. um, our listeners. Someone says here, Doc, please, what are the causes and effects of blue balls? That's this new one to me. Have you come Good. across this? So what do we mean by blue balls? Now, blue balls is pain in the testis okay. or the scrotal area. And it can't be caused the blood vessels, the tubes that contain sperms have all been engorged and so it hurts. Okay. And this normally comes about if somebody is stimulated to the point of, you know, you know, sexual gratification but is not gratified. Okay. Then that is where the pain comes from. Uh, it's commoner in, in, in teenagers and young adults. As one matures and masters this game, probably you don't feel this pain at all. Okay. So if you're experiencing pain and you see a blue body, it means that you are overstimulating yourself to the point where you are not ejaculating. Either you are masturbating, you are not completing it, or you are watching videos that are too stimulatory, or you are reading, you know, material that is too stimulatory. Right. Once you avoid these materials, probably you should be fine. Okay. The ultimate is night wear dreams that takes all the pain away from you. Okay. There was another question that came on earlier on where a gentleman said he actually had a, a curved manhood um, upwards, and obviously it's a it's a problem problem for him, from him. Yeah. Um, good. So, so we call that a cordy. The penis has a bit of angle, which is acceptable, not mm. too angulated, angle downwards. Mm. Okay. But it can be angulated too down, more to the side or up, as right. the person has said. Good. If you were born with it, then it's a congenital problem. Okay. There are about three rods inside the penis, like three fluorescent tube bulbs inside the penis. If one of them is shorter than the other because of congenital abnormality, then it tends to bend towards the shorter side. Mm. And so you are born with it, you are 8 years, 9 years, 15 years, and it's bent. Mm. Then that could be the reason, congenital problem. We can do surgeries to, 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 mm. to correct it. But if it comes in adulthood after 20, 40 years, then you are what to call a pyronese disease. There are fibrous tissue or scars that appears within these rods that squeezes them up or contracts and burn it. And there can be a challenge. And so okay. it can burn it to such a point that sometimes it's difficult even to penetrate. 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 Okay. And that can be an issue. Again, we can deal with them. Okay. Sometimes we start with just vitamin E, even the initial stages, and that can resolve it. So there's, there's hope for yes. treatment. Sometimes there's surgical correction okay. of it. Another question is coming from Selassie, and she says her husband is asthmatic, and as a result, his interest in sex is very low. She wants to know if this asthma is the contributing factor to his lack of interest in sex. Um, um, asthma per se should not. Okay. Of course, you need your lungs, you need a good oxygen to do to, mm. to, 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 this. A whole exercise, exercise. So yeah. if you can't exercise because your asthma is so severe, then this business can be challenging as well. Okay. What I'm not too sure is the medications is on. Okay. Probably we should look at the medications is on again. Okay. Or he's scared because maybe when he gets there, He's, he's struggling for breath, and so it's an avoidance uh, uh, tactic, tactic just okay. to keep alive. Just to, okay. So, well, we need to talk to me and understand what the so issues. So, counseling, uh, counseling, and understanding the issues. Okay, yes. we're going to open the phone lines. Um, if you have any questions, you can dial into the studio. The number is zero three zero two two one six five four one zero three zero two two one six five four one. Let's hear from you, Doc. Uh, while we wait for some callers to, to come in, someone's uh, sending a message. I think it's from the same person, uh, another Selassie. It says, uh, my husband can only, what, what, he can only do <laughs> one round. He's, he's, able to, he's able to keep hardness. Okay. So here's basically what, what the person is actually saying is, um, 
her, her partner actually is able to have a long a long erection and she wants to know whether this is dangerous yeah. uh, because he's he's 50 years old yeah so normally i mean i mean, I mean the system has been designed you know by god in such a way that once you ejaculate sympathetics come in and they shut the system down so that the old blood which have lost its oxygen and mm. food is drained off and a new one can come in okay so if you overstay the erection then it's coming dangerous if you overstay to about two hours probably it, there's no big deal okay. but after two hours definitely after four hours then it's, it will destroy the penis but he's 50 years old and he's gone this way so probably what is happening is not destroying the system because it's still holding on but if it's overstays about four hours then that is a challenge but we need to assess it maybe it's more testosterone maybe he's using something okay you know, maybe he's going to a gym he's using some you know other drinks and that, that contains androgens which may be causing okay. a challenge i have another question that's just come up on screen and says um i've just joined the conversation i am 27 but my testicles are so small and when i ejaculate i release a very small amount of semen is this a health problem a friend of mine tells me it's probably due to low testosterone production if it is um, what foods can help me improve we've talked about foods but doc um yes so the testis has a volume now the volume or let's say a length if you look at the length the, the longest length it should be at more than at least 4.6 centimeters right then that is a good testis and the much or the volume of the testis is sperm sperm production mm. so when you lose the volume of the testis then your sperm are getting lower and lower okay what causes the testis to be low mm. the testis itself produces testosterone right and the testosterone enhances the work of the testis right so if the testis is is, is low <laughs> then probably the cell level may be low okay. and so submetation can be helpful but the most important thing are exogenous steroids okay are you doing bodybuilding doc we have a call online i'll, I'll, I'll come back to you Thank on that you one much. right do we have a call on the line yes sir good morning boys good morning sir welcome yes, ajiman to joseph, come tonight come on. oh ajiman joseph let's hear it from you yeah in clearing my the question that i i asked earlier on i quite remember there was a time I couldn't have enough water within a day. So when, when I was urinating, I felt some little pain in it. That's why I came with that question. And my second question is, can too much of sex cause prostate problems? Or if you are a type who doesn't have sex regularly, can also have uh, prostate problems? Yeah, I mean, this is this is the notion where okay. that goes around where it says, the, if you have more sex, then okay. you reduce the possibility okay. of prostate. So the first question was the water. The yep. truth is that urine is made up of chemicals. And so if you don't drink enough water, we say 1.5, 2 liters a day, then it's a concentrated urine. Sometimes okay. more acidic, and so it burns. So drinking water then can be very, very useful. So what you have is a chemical irritation from a much more concentrated urine. Okay. So that may be the experience. Good. In our books, we know that frequent ejaculation can help uh, protect the prostate. Okay. In our books, yes, it does. Because we know that if you block the sperms from coming out, especially like a vasectomy, the sperms are then broken to little pieces and they produce what you call oxygen-free radicals, which are chemicals, and that promotes prostate cancer. So uh, frequent ejaculation can be protective. The only thing is that if it's not a vasectomy, then even though you are not having frequencies, there are wet dreams, there are other avenues in which the sperms are able to come out. Right. So it's not a disadvantage at all. But definitely if we decide to tie on the tubes, then we need to keep an eye on you. So frequent ejaculation, yes, in our books and experience have shown that it could be protective. Right. Okay. Uh, we have a question here from Senor in Kaswa. He says, please, I'd like to find out whether external hemorrhoids associated with bleeding can affect male fertility normally it shouldn't but if you have external hemorrhoids and you are bleeding it means that you are losing blood and so your blood level is likely to be low what i can conjecture of or deduce is that then your body is sending all the proteins to make the blood to keep you healthy and alive mm. and to the body sperm production is a luxury so if you are not eating well if you are drinking alcohol if you are not well the body will divert all that it needs to for you to get better 
to make blood, to get muscles, okay. to be able to, you know, make your mathematics and brain. It will not go to make okay. Spence. Doc, sorry to interrupt that's you. We have a call on the line. William, are you on the phone? Are you on the phone? Yes, sir. Good morning and welcome to Joy ninety nine point seven Home Affairs. Let's have your question. Yes, I'm forty six, and then I'm a diabetic. Uh, I'm experiencing aggressive numbness under my feet. Aggressive, then, aggressive what? Numbness. Mm -hmm. Okay. Under my feet. And then for the past six years now, I've not been able to have erection. I mean, an aggressive erectile dysfunction, and it's, it's really worrying. I don't know. If there is a way for it, if I can have a chat uh, in future, and then uh, uh, I'll be able to marry and have a chat in future, because it's very really warm. And I, I, don't, I don't know, but there is a way for it. And okay. for the past few years, I've been able to have I didn't call it, uh, an erection at all. I mean, an aggressive erectile dysfunction. Okay. So I want, to, I want to know from a doctor. Okay. And then secondly, and then secondly, uh, I, I don't know what I. It's authentic kind of research. Uh, people that say if you masturbate, you know, it can prevent uh, prostate cancer. I want to know from doctor. Okay. So thank you very much. So let's let's take the first question and that you say diabetes can affect erection because of its effect on the blood vessels and what you call the neuropathy on the nerves. So it can be a challenge. Um good diabetes control is helpful, but for some people we still have a challenge. What I'll say is that the treatment for erection they are at various levels. We can give you medications. If they don't work, there are injections we can give into the penis that can be helpful. So that option is there. If that is a challenge, we can use what they call vacuum pumps that can also be useful. Mm. If that doesn't work, we can put implants in there to help the situation. So there are various levels of intervention. The truth is that children are making semen and the erections are two different pathways. Once we get the rigidity, the sperms will flow. Okay. So the emphasis, how do I get the rigidity for the sperms to flow? And I think you shouldn't be afraid. You can get married. I mean, we can talk to the wife and discuss it. And there are various ways of doing that. If you are not able to do it here, we can direct him where you can get help. But now, various urologists, various expertise are available. Okay. And we can direct him to a urologist who can help one way or the other. Okay. I think we have another caller. Mensa, are you on the line? Hello? Mensa? Hello? Hello, good morning, sir. Good morning. Welcome to Joy 99.7. Let's have your question. Okay, so please, uh, 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 hello, sir. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, please, uh, 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 I'm 39 years. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, go uh, ahead. We, we can hear you. Go yeah. ahead. Uh, yeah, I'm 39 years. My wife is 40, 43 years. She got pregnant uh, eight months ago, and uh, uh, the pregnant spread. So, since that time, he hasn't been able to get pregnant again. And I don't know, is it my semen that is not good or he doesn't have good eggs or what should we do? Okay. So, thank you very much. So, I, I think it's a concern. Um, I must admit that we, know to, we need to do your semen analysis to be able to make that call. But definitely, your wife at 43, as you approach 45, 47, getting pregnant becomes a bit difficult mm -hmm. and you may need a gynecologist help in one nutritional support or the other so i think that i would say that you and your wife should see the gynecologist and um they will, they will ask you to do a spare analysis and also assess your wife and then be able to advise yes we need to know what your situation is so far the sperms are concerned but of important and of time co uh, concern is mm -hmm. your wife and the age and sometimes even when your sperms are very good okay. at the age 43 we may still want to you know, expert that action sure. to be able to achieve. If you want to have two or three children, we need to start quickly. So just go with the wife to any gynecologist at all. I mean, there are specialists of various fields. Okay, if help. a gynecologist cannot help, he will direct you to one right. other person who has an expertise in one area or the yeah, other. There are some women yeah. who have been able to have, have children yeah, even, even yeah. late late 40s, exactly. early 50s. So, so there are specialists help available. who can be helpful. Right. Yeah. I believe we have another caller on the line. Hello? Hello? Hello. Good morning. Good morning. What's your name? And where are you calling from? Well, I'm Mike from Adenta. Okay. Okay, please go ahead. Yes. Uh, uh, I thank you very, very much for the good that you're doing. Right. Michael, can you reposition yourself? You're breaking up. Can you reposition yourself, please? Oh, okay. Um, what I'm saying is that uh, I thank you for the good work being for us. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And uh, ask, does the uh, BP medicine? 
Doc, did you get that? Yes, the BP medication. Yes, that, yeah. that, is, that is a very interesting question because um, all the BP medications have a chance to affect erectile function. Yeah. And all of them has a chance not to affect erectile function. So the strange thing is that you give one person this medication it and works. urea is <laughs> perfect. And that person then is giving erectile dysfunction. And you swap. You give this person the other one. He comes and thank you very much for good work done. And you give it to another person and he also says thank you very much. So talk to your doctor. We make a switch and we'll be glad to know that a switch has been helpful. Okay. But definitely the BP medicines make blood flow a bit sluggish and also reduce some of them reduce the rate at which the heart beats okay. it's the heart beating and everything that comes together to allow for a, a good direction so just touch your daughter let's make a little switch and you should be fine right yeah. do we have any more any more phone callers okay okay right um doc i mean it's been a, it's been a very very interesting interesting conversation um there's one more question i just want want to ask you with regards to men's health you touched on the issue of the prostate you've talked about um, issues of um, andropause uh, you've talked about um, the whole general importance of good health in the world that we live in where we have these very fast lifestyles uh, we don't just sit down and cook the way we used to it everything is takeaways and all that how does how from what you've experienced as a, as a, as a medical person and having seen these changes in people's lifestyles has it contributed to increasing the incidences of prostate and all these sexual health is uh, issues is it a factor or are things just as they were many many years ago have our has our lifestyle affected our general health yeah i, 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 will, I will say that it has let in me start ways? from similar analysis now we realize that the sperm counts are going lower and lower so even within the world who we are all losing the number it used to be 20 million it's now being reduced to 16 million as normal wow so our lifestyles are having effect i mean we are talking about fat and fat food post cancer was um, an issue but now it's, it's virtually a pandemic in the environment here because of our lifestyle so it, is it that it's, prevalent it's, 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 is it in, in uh, ghana yes yeah, seven percent seven out of hundred I mean, it's quite a, quite a significant number. number. You know, after every 100 people, seven of them is harboring prostate cancer at various levels. So it is an issue. So I think our lifestyles, you know, her. the good news is that we, we still have an improved medical system. It's very in Ghana here. Sure. So we just have to take advantage of that. When there are disadvantages in solving some of the problems, because yeah. life is offering challenges. Mm -hmm. Let's take advantage of what we have that can help uh, deal with the, with the issue. So I, I think things are going up and up. But okay. we keep working. Uh, our life expectancy is getting better and better. And for prostate, okay. the moment we get to 60 and 65 as life expectancy for men, mm. then prostate becomes virtually inevitable. So some is also related to our living longer than we used to. Oh, and that okay. is good news, good and bad. Good and bad. <laughs> okay. Yes. Right. Let me cut about two or three minutes to go. Mm -hmm. So, Doc, um, a wrap-up. What, what advice and guidance would you give to fathers generally to make sure that they have improved and health pertaining to the field of um urology yeah. and all that yeah I, I i think i think that i mean fathers self are important i mean for some of us are, are lecturers right. and we see how important students have to depend on their fathers for survivor and if you lose a father suppression so somebody comes to class and morose because you know father is unwell or something so we have a very important pivotal rule and we have to keep healthy mm. as i said exercising is important and nutrition let's find time for food and nutrition maybe very little but as much balance as possible by the course of days you know that there'll be protein there'll be vegetables all of them as you could always say that by the course of the day you have prepare your meal in your stomach yep. which covers everything else the opportunity for assessment is there laboratories are there doctors at various levels are there i mean our health system continues to be rated as one of the best in the sub-region and even in the world okay so let's take advantage of screening let's take advantage of talking to doctors and other health people about our health and when the advice are given please uh, let's follow it through and and we are doing well we are life expected 60. we are putting that by the next census or, or, or the data we should be hitting 65 right. like a woman right. and probably <laughs> overtaking them Along the line. Okay, Doc. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to say a big, a big thank you to our producer Daniela uh, for putting together the show. Also, Maoli, who's been coordinating the cameras and the messages, and not forgetting Dennis, who's been working as 
on social media on joy 99.7 live facebook it's been a pleasure bringing you home home affairs sammy forson is coming up with the weekend city show in just a minute and next week your regular host adam night will be here thanks for listening and god bless